Hey guys, so I had planned to make a video talking about the facts of spina bifida and the more I got into it, the more I felt like it just wasn't the right time to really put that video out because I haven't exactly talked about, and there goes my cat. <laughs> no, no, you need to move I'm in the middle of a video. Come here, baby. Hey guys, so I was in the middle of filming and my cat decided to jump on my laptop, <laughs> which is where I had my phone sitting, and now she's trying to see what we're doing. Say hi, Nana. I'm not going to be all camera shy, okay. Anyways, <laughs> I... I'm making this video pretty much because initially I had planned on making a video talking about spina bifida and giving you guys pretty much the facts on it and I didn't feel like that would have done any justice like I haven't exactly talked to you guys about my experience with spina bifida and for anybody that's watching my videos doesn't really know my life with spina bifida so I just wanted to make a video talking about that and then Next week, I'll probably make a video talking about the facts of spinal bifida with more statistics and instead of just my experience with it. So, that's why I'm making this video. And for the record, if I look down a lot, it's not because I just don't want to look at the camera. I actually wrote notes, so I don't forget anything. But I know I lived it, but still, um, I'll forget something. I'll start rambling and then... Yeah, so if this video ends up being super, super long, sorry. What, Nana? So, yeah, anyways. So, for those of you that don't know, I was born with spina bifida. And within minutes of being born, I ended up having to have surgery. And I didn't really grasp the concept of why. All I really knew growing up was that I had surgery because, from what my mom told me, I had liquid rushing to my brain. And just recently I ended up doing research on it and found out that that liquid is actual spinal fluid that was rushing to my brain, which pretty much means that I have hydrocephalus on top of the spina bifida. So... Yeah, I didn't know that up until recently. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a shunt and it pretty much drains the spinal fluid from my brain because with hydrocephalus, what happens is the spinal fluid is rushed to the brain and if it's not treated, then either your head would end up blowing up to the point where you would end up having brain damage. Or you could possibly end up dying from it. But at least that's what I read on the internet. <laughs> I don't really know much about it. I just learned that I had it. So, yeah. I ended up having... <laughs> I'm sorry, my cat is just being weird. So, yeah. I ended up having about eight surgeries growing up. I say eight because two of the surgeries that I did end up having involved two different um, incisions. So that's why I say eight, even though there were technically like six surgeries, they just involved two different incisions. So I had surgery to reconstruct my legs. For those of you that grew up in the 90s and saw Rugrats, my feet were turned in like Tommy's. And they pretty much ended up breaking every single bone in my feet to pretty much make it like a puzzle per se. 
and put my feet back together the way they were supposed to. And what ended up happening was they took out my heel and put in the plastic piece. So right now, I don't have a heel. <laughs> I haven't had one for years. And because of that, I can't flex my foot. Either one of them. I can move it upwards a little bit like this way. But I can't press down. So that means that I can't drive. So because of that, I have to have hand controls. As of right now, I don't have that. But I have attempted to drive. And what ends up happening is I, my legs end up spasm, spasming because I have that as well on top of everything else that's wrong with me. But um, before I get to the leg spasm stuff, I had that surgery to reconstruct my legs. Well, basically my feet. Um, I had a surgery that's a little bit underneath my belly button. And that was to pretty much close up a hole that I had right underneath it kind of right underneath my belly button and that hole was there so that my mom could end up putting a cath because I have to use a catheter to go pee or anything like that because I don't have any bladder control which is one of the symptoms to having spina bifida um I obviously had that surgery within minutes of being born and sorry my cat's just being weird um so I had that <laughs> I had that surgery done within minutes of being born and then I had it revised when I was like 17 so what ended up happening when I was 17 I went to the hospital, had the surgery, and when I woke up, my right side of my body was numb. I couldn't feel it at all. So, with that surgery, I ended up having a bunch of my nerves messed up. So that's where the muscle spasms come in. So, my right arm, I couldn't lift it, I couldn't move my hand, like, I couldn't do anything. I ended up having to go to therapy to pretty much regain the feeling in my arm, my legs, and pretty much teach myself to write again, because that's the hand I used to write with. So, yeah. And then I had a cyst on my spine, and it was, it was a pretty, like, intense... <laughs> I mean, most people think that cysts are not that big of a deal, but this was a cyst that was directly on top of the incision that I initially had when I was born. So it was really painful. It got to where I couldn't walk. I was hunched over and ended up being rushed to the hospital. <laughs> and the doctors were pretty much scared that it was infected and if it would have grown any more than it actually did and then the infection would have reached my spine and they said nine out of ten times I probably would have ended up paralyzed because of it thank god that didn't happen what ended up happening was once I got to the hospital it popped overnight so it made the doctor's job a little bit easier because now they saw the inside of the cyst and were able to do whatever they needed to do to get rid of the infection because it did have an infection. So, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much the surgeries that I've had. And then, as far as like my disability goes, it's hasn't really bothered me per se up until recently and to be honest I don't really know why <laughs> but it has and it's part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel just to bring awareness to it because 
me and myself having it didn't even know that much about it until I started doing the research on it so I mean growing up I knew that I was different from all the rest of the other kids at school I mean I got picked on a lot I ended up having people make fun of me because of the way that I walked or the way that I did certain things or the way that I looked because when I walk I kind of walked with my legs bent over a little bit and then for a little bit when I had my leg surgery I was in a wheelchair and I got picked on for that and then another symptom that comes with spina bifida is the fact that I do not have any control over my bladder so growing up as a kid in elementary school I ended up having a lot of accidents and there's this one <laughs> particular accident that kind of stands out because like it bothered me because of the fact that I got picked on for it I was in fifth grade and I ended up having an accident and one kid <laughs> decided that he would point it out and ended up laughing at me and told the whole class and they pretty much joined in on making fun of me about it and from then on like every day in class I mean I got picked on for it so I mean it happened more than that that one time but that one time pretty much stands out because of that like the whole class joined in on making fun of me about it but yeah um as far as being picked on i mean it didn't really stop after elementary school as sad as that sounds i got picked on all the way to high school like people made fun of me in high school because of the way i walked in middle school during pe i wore shorts and I wear braces to help me walk so I got picked on for wearing my braces so yeah I got picked on a lot I mean luckily I had some friends that stood up for me and backed me up whenever I needed it and my mom did the same if I got picked on in public it did happen a, a couple times my mom would be there to like stop them my mom was the one to stay with me during my surgeries like she's pretty much made it okay for me to be disabled when it didn't really feel that way at times like it felt like something was wrong with me and then I did something be to have this happen and at times it did feel like that and my mom helped me with that so yeah and I mean despite everything that I went through growing up with being hospitalized for weeks at a time having surgery therapy sessions being catheter having the catheter because sometimes that catheter did hurt <laughs> um being picked on like despite all that like I have accomplished a lot with being disabled I mean just recently I went to a modeling casting and I never thought in a million years I would have a chance to do that because you see models and you see these tall skinny women on runways and I mean nowhere near skinny <laughs> and I'm 4'11 so the fact that I had the chance to do that and the casting call was specifically for people with disabilities so that was pretty cool <laughs> and then a week before my diploma I actually graduated late from high school because of that surgery with my cyst a week before my diploma 
I ended up getting my certificate in medical billing and coding. And that summer after I graduated, I enrolled at the University of Phoenix. I haven't finished, but I managed to get two more certificates on top of the ones that I already have while enrolled at the university. I'm enrolled right now to get my bachelor's in health administration. And as far as my career goes, I mean, I was working from home for almost four years and the person that I was working for pretty much took me under her wing and showed me everything that I needed to know for my career. She went as far as inviting me to Minneapolis for a seminar and I pretty much owe <laughs> my whole career credit to her aside from going to school. Everything that I know as far as my career goes is because of her. She showed me everything that I know. And I mean, not too long ago, I started my own business from home doing medical billing and coding. And it's because of her that I was able to do that. So despite everything that I went through growing up, I'm still able to say today that I own my own business at the age of 24. And not only that, but given the fact that I have spina bifida, I'm able to say that I can walk and get around semi-independently. And not only that, but I, having the hydrocephalus, I mean, I'm lucky to say that I'm alive. So, despite the fact that I have the disability that I have, I'm, I'm able to say all that. And I've accomplished a lot, even though I have my disability. So, just wanted to make this video to kind of give you guys an insight on what it's like to live with my type of spina bifida because there are different types and if anybody else is watching this that has a disability just know that your disability is just a part of you it's not exactly what makes you you have to live with it of course but despite your disability you are able to do whatever you want to do you just gotta put your mind to it and have people support you. The right type of people. The people that actually want you to succeed. And I'm lucky enough to have <laughs> a couple people that want to see me succeed and are there for me. But, um, yeah. If anybody's watching this that has a disability, just know that your disability shouldn't get in the way of your dreams. If you want to go out and model, I mean, go for it. I mean, I just went to a casting call for it and modeling is not even one thing I wanted to do. <laughs> I just went because I've never even known of a chance for people with disabilities to model. So, I thought I'd just give it a shot. I mean, why not, you know? So, yeah, I've you have a disability, just don't let that get in the way. Whatever it is you want to do, do it. Your disability, at times, might end up being the reason why you can't get out of bed. Because there's days where I have that same thing. My body is just done for the day. But it shouldn't be the reason it gets in the way of your dreams. You should be able to do whatever it is you want to do despite your disability. I mean, I'm... 24 years old. I own my own business and not many people can say that. So, yeah, just wanted to make this video and next week I'll end up posting the video with the facts and statistics on spina bifida. So, thanks for watching and if you made it this far, I know this video is long. 
just thanks for hearing my story. Um, Spina Bifida. And just like and subscribe and share to whoever you would want to share this video to. If you know anybody that has Spina Bifida or anybody that has a disability in general. Just share the video with them so that they can know what it feels like to have a disability but still be able to do everything that I was able to do, which is own my own business, have the education that I have, and the support system that I actually have. So, thanks for watching this video.